Hi, welcome to the explainer series for quant. Here we'll be using very simple concepts and apply it to cat level problems and solve them as easily as possible. Please do share this with your friends who are preparing for cat and other MBA entrance examinations. Uh, you can like and follow us on Facebook as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel to get live uh, event and notifications for all the updates regarding CAT and other MB entrance examination. You can also look at our WhatsApp as well as Telegram lists. You can join over there and we will update you. We don't spam over there. <clears throat> if you want, you can enroll for our Quant and LRDI courses. These are the best and the most comprehensive courses available in the market. Hi. In today's session, we will look at time and distance. Now, a lot of people fret about questions over here, but before we jump into how to go about solving problems, let's see what are the relations that we're looking at. A few episodes ago, we had looked at time and work and we had used the concept of proportionality over there. Time and distance is very similar. Now here again, you'll have three variables, distance, speed, and time. The basic relation is distance covered equals speed at which you travel times the duration for which you travel. So if you hold your distance constant, right, speed and time will be inversely related. Your speed doubles, time becomes half. Your speed triples, time becomes one third. Your speed becomes th three by two, your time becomes two thirds of the time required for the same distance. When speed is held constant, distance covered is directly proportional to time. So if you double the distance covered, you will have to take you'll have to travel for double the amount of time right if you half the distance your time taken will also be half and a same relationship happens between distance and speed when time is held constant so if i have one hour to travel if i travel for 50 kilometers per hour i'll travel 50 kilometers if i travel at 75 kilometers per hour i'll travel 75 kilometers so whatever is the ratio of distances same will be the ratio of speeds. Now let us look at something which you will, I'm very sure that you will have actually seen it in multiple texts that you follow. Okay. This came up in uh, CAT 2004. It says if a man cycles at 10 kilometers per hour, then he arrives at a certain place at 1 PM. If he cycles at 15 kilometers per hour, he'll arrive at the same place at 11 AM. At what speed must he cycle to get there at noon? And your options are 11, 12, 13 and 14 kilometers. Per hour. Now, one thing which is not given here, uh, it's not uh, explicitly mentioned in the question, but you will have to use it without which you cannot solve it is that you take the same route, right? So the distance covered in each of the cases is the same. And the second is you start at the same point of time. So your starting time is the same. So if you started in the first case at 10 a.m., the second case also you started at 10 a.m., the third case also you'll start at 10 a.m. In all the three cases, your starting time is going to be the same. Now let's draw a rough schematic of what is going on here. So at 10 kilometers per hour, you'll reach at 1 PM at 15 kilometers per hour, you'll reach at 11 AM. You need to find out what speed should you go to reach at 12 noon, right? Here you're saving two hours of your journey time, right? Your journey time is shaved off by two hours. For, instead of reaching at 1 p.m., you started at, uh, you reached at 11 a.m. Now, let's look at the speeds. The ratio of speeds is 2 is to 3. From 10 kilometers per hour, the speed has become 15 kilometers per hour, right? So ratio of timings should be 3 is to 2. So if you take 3 hours in the first case, in the second case, you're going to take 2 hours, which means you're going to save 1 hour. In the actual problem, I'm saving 2 hours, which means it's double of what I assumed. So if I take six hours here, you will take only four hours, right? Now, once you know this, you know two things. One is, you know what time you started. You also know what is the distance, right? You can, f uh, you can easily figure that out. At 1 p.m., it's six hours since you started. Six hours before 1 p.m. would be 7 a.m. Same ways here, 11 a.m., four hours before that will also be 7 a.m., which means your starting time is 7 a.m. In other words, you need to cover this distance in five hours. So your journey time in the required case is five hours. Now you need to figure out the distance. Distance is also pretty straightforward. Distance is speed into time. Six into 10 is 60. 
4 into 15 is also 60. So your distance is 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers in 5 hours is 12 kilometers per hour. Pretty straightforward. Now let's see what came up in a recent CAT examination. Okay. Uh, it says point A and B are 150 kilometers apart. Car 1 and car 2 travel from A to B, but car 2 starts from car A when car A is already 20 kilometers away from A. Each car travels at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour for the first 50 kilometers, at 50 kilometers per hour for the next 50 kilometers, and at 25 kilometers per hour for the last 50 kilometers. The distance in kilometers between car 2 and car B when car 1 reaches B is what? Right? This is a type in the answer, so you didn't have any options to work with. Uh, should not be a big problem. Okay. Now, if I draw a rough diagram of what is going on here, so you start from point A, you have to reach point B, the entire distance is 150 kilometers. Now, there are three segments. The first segment is 50 kilometers. Both the cars will travel at 100 kilometers per hour. So for the individual timings will be half an hour. Car 1 will take half an hour to cover this distance, car 2 will also take half an hour to cover this distance. Similarly, in the second segment, it will be 1 hour and in the third segment, it will be 2 hours. So both the <coughs> both the cars are going to take 2 plus 1 plus half, 3 and a half, kil three and a half hours to cover this entire distance. Now you can break it in parts and try to figure out when does each car reach which place. Okay, <clears throat> but instead of doing this, let's try to do it using proportionality very easily. Now, car one <clears throat> has a lead of car one has a lead of twenty kilometers. So, in terms of time, in terms of time, twenty kilometers at hundred kilometers per hour will take one fifth of an hour. One fifth of an hour. <clears throat> so, this is the lead which car has in terms of time. Now, why did I take time? Because the speeds are already fixed. The distances are already fixed, right? So both of them are going to take the same duration of time to complete the journey. The only problem is because it has a lead of one fifth of an hour when it started. So for example, if car one started at 10 o'clock, car two would start at 10, 12, 12 minutes past 10, right? One fifth of an hour is 12 minutes. So 12 minutes past 10, right? <clears throat> now this lead is going to be there even at the very end, right? Even at the very end, the lead is still going to be there. So whatever, whenever car one reaches, car two will still have to cover 12 minutes worth of journey, right? Now in 12 minutes, this is the last segment, right? 12 minutes, last segment, your speed is 25 kilometers per hour. So the distance required will be 25 into 12 by 60. One fifth of an hour, five kilometers will be the distance, right? Pretty straightforward to work with. Now let's try to apply proportionality to a slightly trickier question. This came up in ZAT 2013. Let's see what this is. Ram, Sham and Hari went for a 100 kilometer journey. Ram and Hari started the journey in Ram's car at the rate of 25 kilometers per hour, while Sham walked at 5 kilometers per hour. After some time, Hari got off and started walking at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour. Ram went back and picked up Sham. All three reached the destination simultaneously. The number of hours required for the trip is how much? These are your options. Let's draw a diagram of what is going on here. So the entire journey is and that distance is 100 kilometers, right? So you have uh, initially Ram and Hari move, right? Ram drops off Hari here, Hari continues in his uh, journey. Ram goes back, picks up Sham. Sham was moving at five kilometers per hour here. Once he picks up, he takes Sham along and all three of them reach the destination at the same time. Right? So the duration of journey for each of them is the same, but the speeds are not the same because Ram is traveling at 25, Sham is traveling partially at 5, partially at 25, Hari is traveling partially at 5, partially at 25. Right? <coughs> now, let's see, let's look at Ram and Hari. Right? From this point onwards, right? Hari has covered this much distance. Right? Ram has gone here picked up Sham and covered 
this dis so ram's distance covered is this much hari's distance covered is this much it is the same duration of time right <coughs> now because the duration of time is the same distance covered will be directly proportional to the speed hari is going at 5 km per hour ram is going at 25 km per hour which means for every one unit that hari covers ram is going to cover 5 units so if hari covers a distance d ram is going to cover a distance of 5 times d now if you split this 5 times d this portion is d this entire portion will be 4d split evenly this will be 2d and 2d which means this part is twice of the distance that hari covers now by symmetry and even using algebra you can prove that this distance will also be d right this distance will also be d right you can do it in a very similar manner if you start from the beginning to when sham ram comes back again right whatever distance sham has covered ram will cover five times that distance right so if this is x this entire journey will be 5x out of which x is gone so this journey will be 4x 4x is split evenly 2x and 2x which means x is equal to d so this journey distance is same as this journey distance now the question was what is the total duration of the journey right now this is 4 times d which is 100 km so this is 25 km this is 50 km this is 25 km now we can add any one person's times and we can figure out what the overall journey is going to be let's do it for sham sham covers 25 km at 5 km per hour so that will be 5 hours then the balance 50 plus 25 75 km at 25 km per hour he is going with ram right 75 km per hour at 25 20 75 km at 25 km per hour is 3 hours so 5 plus 3 8 you can also verify it for ram ram's total distance is 25 plus 50 75 75 plus another 50 125 125 75 200 km his speed is 25 km per hour that's again 8 hours right pretty straightforward question is it right if you know how to use proportionality you can also use algebra to prove it right pretty straightforward question if you know how to use proportionality you can also use algebra and solve it it's not very difficult to solve it that way is also but with proportionality you can do it very very quickly let's look at a question which i'm pretty sure you would have seen in multiple texts if you have ever uh, looked at trying to solve some questions on time and distance and let's see how proportionality can solve it extremely easily okay uh, mr modi started from bombay to goa attended to attend a meeting at 10 am after covering a after covering half the distance from bombay to goa his car developed a problem and he was able to drive only 3 fourths of his original speed he unfortunately reached goa at 11:30 am Sitting on the beach shack, he realized that had the problem started another 90 kilometers further along the journey, he would have been able to reach Goa at 11 a.m. Your questions are: What is the distance between Bombay and Goa, and what was his original speed? Okay. Now, again, if I draw a diagram, this was the plan. You go at full speed from Bombay to Goa. You will reach at 10 in the morning. Unfortunately, after covering half the journey. he was able to drive only at 3/4 the speed right as a result he reached at 11:30 now if he had covered another 90 km at full speed right and then gone at half at 3/4 speed he would have reached goa at 11 am so basically he would have saved half an hour in this case right you have two questions what was the distance and what is the speed original speed that he intended to travel right uh let's try to solve i mean you can form equations you will have three equations three unknowns distance is unknown speed is unknown and the duration is unknown okay so rather than trying to form equations let's try to solve it in a slightly easier manner okay now let's look at the second and the third case right the actual case which happened not the plan and what was a an alternate scenario right now by traveling 90 kilometers extra at full speed He is able to save thirty minutes. Instead of reaching at eleven thirty, you'll reach at eleven, right? So by traveling ninety kilometers at full speed, instead of traveling ninety kilometers at three fourth speed, you are able to make up thirty minutes of your lost time. How much is the lost time you have to make up? One and a half hours. 
right? 30 minutes into three will be one and a half hours, right? So if he does this three times, if he does it three times, he will be able to make up the entire lost time, right? Which means the leftover journey was 270 kilometers, which means the full journey from Bombay to Goa is 540 kilometers, right? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try to solve the second part of this question. Now we know the full distance is 540. Okay, <clears throat> now let's look at again this portion, right? In the second case, the alternate case scenario, you're going at full speed. In the actual case, you went at three-fourths the speed. So ratio of speeds is three is to four. So ratio of time should be four is to three. Right? Which means if you take four hours to cover this distance, you will take only three hours to cover this 90 kilometers. Which means you'll save one hour because of this. Now, between the second case and the actual scenario, right? Between these two scenarios, the only difference is between these two segments. The first half is being covered at full speed. After this 90 kilometers, both, of, both the cases you're covering at three-fourth speed. So the only time difference is because of this segment of 90 kilometers. Now, the ratio of speeds is three is to four, ratio of time is four is to three, which means if you take four hours for this, you will take three hours in the better case scenario, which means you save one hour. Actually, you're saving only half an hour, right? Which means everything becomes half of what I assumed. Which means if you go at actual speed or full speed, you will cover 90 kilometers in one and a half hours. 90 kilometers in one and a half hours is basically 60 kilometers per hour. If you can pinpoint where to use proportionality in time speed distance questions, you can solve those questions very, very easily. You don't have to resort to a lot of formulas, tricks, techniques, etc., or shortcuts to solve these questions. That completes this particular session. If you liked it, please do share it with your friends who are preparing for CAT and other MBA entrance examination. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow our Facebook page. Uh, the links for our course are available on the description to this video. Till we meet again the next time, goodbye and all the best.